All right, folks, we got two goals for this video. Our first goal is we're going to learn how to use patty paper to perform rotations on a coordinate plane. And then we're actually going to learn our rotation rules. How, how can I tell just by looking at the ordered pairs if there's been a rotation or not? Um, and so if I start, what we're going to start is we're going to start with our pre-image, which will be triangle ABC given by these three ordered pairs right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to perform the following rotations, see how the ordered pairs change, and then from there generalize a general form of each rotation. So I'm going to start with a sheet of this patty paper. This is, you can buy it at any store. It's used to kind of keep hamburger patties separate in a stack. That's why they call it patty paper. I'm just going to lay it over my figure. And the first thing I'm going to do, is you, you see we can kind of see through the paper, is I'm going to put a, a point for my origin. And I'm just going to draw a little one unit by one unit y-axis and x-axis. And then I'm going to plot our points. There's point A. Then we've got point B. And then we've got point C. And I can draw my lines if I want to, but I think this will be enough for our purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my pencil right there on the origin, that origin point right there. And I'm going to start by rotating my patty paper 90 degrees counterclockwise. So if I rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's why we draw the little um, lines on our X and Y axis so we can see when we've gone exactly 90 degrees. And then here's my point A prime, B prime, C prime. It looks like after a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, A went from 2 comma 1 to negative 1 comma 2. So A prime is negative 1 comma 2. B went to negative 3, 5. C went to negative 6, 4. And so I, I can, I can I'll, I'll actually draw the dots on my paper in a little bit, on my original paper. But let's generalize what exactly happened. If I start with an ordered pair, how could I describe the change from A to A prime, or from B to B prime, or from C to C prime? And what you might be noticing is it looks like a and B change spots, like the six was the second place and now it's in the first position. The four was in the first position, now it's in the second position. So it's like the order reversed, but we also changed the sign of what is now that first X coordinate. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and plot those two points. We've got negative one, two, there's our A prime. We had negative three, five, prime, and we got six, four, that's our C prime. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move into our next rotation, which is 180 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Okay, so I'm going to bounce back to my original. And now instead of just doing a 90 degree rotation, we're going to keep going until we get to a full 180. And here are our points right now. We can see that my A double prime, we'll call this A double prime, our A double prime is at negative 2, negative 1. And that's our A double prime. Our B double prime looks like negative 5, negative 3. B double prime is negative 5, negative 3. Our C double prime looks like the order pair negative 4, negative 6. And now let's generalize once again. And I'm, I'm not generalizing from here to here because that would just be another 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. We want to generalize from our original point to this point. So if I'm looking here, it looks like our point went from 4, 6 to negative 4, negative 6, from 5, 3 to negative 5, negative 3, and from 2, 1 to negative 2, negative 1. So it looks like all we're doing is we have the original points in their original positions, but we change the sign of both of them. So that's your rule for 180 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Keep in mind, and we'll, we'll emphasize this idea in a minute, that 180 degrees counterclockwise rotation, like so if I went 180 degrees counterclockwise, that's the same thing as going 180 degrees clockwise, because halfway around is halfway around, doesn't matter which direction you go. Now, we're going to do, uh, let me plot those points real quick, and I'll, I'll be quick about it. So give me one, negative five, negative three, and negative four, negative six. A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Now, we're to our last rotation, which is a 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation. So, whoop, 90 degrees, 180, 270 would put us right here. So it looks like our A triple prime boop, 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 is 1, negative 2. B triple prime is 3, negative 5. C triple prime is 6, negative 4. And we want to generalize once again from our original points 
to our image points, from our pre-image to our image. And it looks like we're changing the position. We're flip-flopping A and B, but now we're changing the sign of the second number. So it looks like we're going B comma negative A. Five, three, we flipped it to three, five, and then we changed the sign of the second number. Okay, and so then if I plot these points, I'll put my A triple prime, right here in three, five, and six, eight, four. So A triple prime, B triple prime, C triple prime, and draw both right here. So here is our theory. Now, a couple of things to point out. First off, what about a 360 degree rotation? Well, hopefully you recognize that if I take something and spin around 360 degrees, we end up back at the original point. So this is not really a transformation that we have to worry about because it's going to be back to the original. And then here's the thing you say, well, we're, interested, we're interested in these counterclockwise rotations. What if we want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, for example? Well, that's actually really simple. If we want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, let's picture this. If I want to go 90 degrees clockwise, that would be the same thing as going 270 degrees counterclockwise. So if you know these counterclockwise rotations, you're fine. So nine, 90, uh, 270 counterclockwise would be 90 degrees clockwise. And then here's the last thing. This is still a lot of rules to remember and memorize. But what I would encourage you if, is if you remember this rule right here, we can recreate any other of these rotations. Meaning, if you want to go 180 counterclockwise, just do the first transformation, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then do another 90 degrees counterclockwise, and you'd end up here. If you flip A and B and negate the first one, and then we do it again, flip A and B, but negate the first one, in other words, change that positive four to a negative four, look, by doing two 90 degrees counterclockwise rotations, you've effectively done 180 degrees counterclockwise rotation. And so we kind of see how just really knowing the 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation um, can help you really perform any rotation that's a multiple of 90 degrees. But then also don't forget, you've also got your good old patty paper here. If you draw a blank, this is always a good tool to use as well.